Hey ya! Welcome back to the Den of Alacrity. Thank you so much for joining me. This is my third video on 3D printing now, and some of you must be thinking, show me the damn printer already. And oh boy, am I gonna do that in today's video. First, I have a confession to make. This video was supposed to be out like four weeks ago. When I originally planned it, it was meant to be only five days of printing. In the next video, I'm gonna showcase some of the things you can do with a 3D printer by doing five useful prints in five days. I'll pass, Mac. Look at you in 2020 having optimism. Unfortunately, over the five days, I ran into a whole host of problems, and that five days quickly turned into four weeks of taking my entire printer apart and putting it back together. I like upfront conclusions, so I have one for you. 3D printing is fiddly, especially when that printer was from your parents, from an auction house, that you weren't really sure was working in the first place. But you know what? I'm over it. I'm over it. It's okay. I'm done. It's fine. It's fine. The video today is going to answer one last question about 3D printing. What the heck can you make with it? I've got a variety of prints to show off that are useful in my life that I think will be useful for you too. All of the prints you'll see in today's video were found on Thingiverse or made by me. Well, one was, kind of. And I'm going to leave links to them in an article in the description down below, so you should definitely go check it out. It's right next to the like and subscribe button. I'm going to get right into it, but first, a montage. Welcome to my kitchen. I thought I'd come down here to talk to you about the first set of prints, which I'm calling household helpers because they're all small things to help me around the house. The first print was something I've wanted to do for a little while, ever since we got these little plastic clothes pegs for our clothesline. I saw those, I'm always on the lookout for little things that I think, oh, I could print that. And I saw these and immediately thought, yeah, it's definitely printable. There's no metal involved, so I could definitely do something like that. These are some clothes pegs with a similar design made by a user called Thomas Forsyth. So it turns out I was right. Very similar pushing mechanism, a little bit harder to push on. The next print is something that I vividly remember from childhood. My mum always used to have these clips to hold uh, unresealable bags closed, and when I knew I was going to do some household helpers, I thought I could definitely print some of them. So I've got some here. So it's just these long bar clips, right, that clip across things and close them, and I printed two of these large ones, and then I got three of these littler ones as well. So I'm going to use them on bags of sugar. Let me show you. So here we've got an unreasonable bag of sugar and I'm just going to clamp it closed. Voila, look at that. Perfect. Little flower here, which I think we can do something similar with. Pinch that shut like that and that will keep it closed. Amazing, those are going to work perfectly. These bag clips were made by a user called MasterFX, so huge thank you to them, they're perfect. Finally, now I'm facing a bit of a problem, and this is just a kitchen bugbear for me, I'm being really pedantic, but I don't know if you can see, we ha often have a lot of tea towels in use at any one time, and the best place to hang them is over the top of these drawers. And the only problem is, if I want to get to something in the cupboard down here, I have to like move it out of the way. This is a real big issue, I know, I know. Oh, sorry for me. Great, but I knew I could solve this with 3D printing. So I took to Thingiverse and I found this towel hook here made by Ken Wilkinson. I thought absolutely perfect, so I rushed, I stuck it on my 3D printer only to realise that it was too small. I never fear, I made some adjustments and I just extended the length a little bit into these ones and they'll fit over just perfectly. Right, on to category two, I'll see you upstairs. But first, montage. We're back at my desk for this next one. I think I can use my 3D printer to improve what has become my home within my home. I use this space all the time and I have some ideas. The first problem I need to solve is my over encumbrance with memory sticks and SD cards. I've just got so many and I sometimes lose them for months at a time. I found this amazing memory stick and SD card holder by Ioma on um, Thingiverse. First, I had to print a test uh, print to see which fit was best. I ended up going for B. So I printed the whole thing and this is just perfect. I can stick it right on my desk, it'll fit all my memory sticks and SD cards in them and I can keep them safe and make sure I know where they are. I have to do a lot of video calls so I need comfortable headphones and a little while back I bought these bad boys. They are um, a lot, 
but they're super comfortable. Problem is, I have nowhere to rest them. For the minute, I've been using this plug. That's probably a bad idea, so we should print something to fix that. My friend Matt, he sent me the files for the hook he uses. It's meant to go on the side of a desk, but I thought rather than that, I would put it on this pipe that runs around the back of my desk. The problem is that it doesn't quite fit. So I made this rudimentary part to help it fit. This bit here is just gonna go around the pipe and then the screw can kind of hold onto this bit and it should keep them nice and sturdy. I just used some spare bits of timing belt here stuck with super glue to make sure that it's got a nice grip on the pipe as it goes round. Look at that. My desk is looking so much better now and I can't wait to put these things to use. Now throughout all of these, I was still having issues and you can see where my printer was skipping layers if you look really closely. After the big headphone hook, my printer just started malfunctioning in a bunch of weird ways. So I spent the next two weeks taking it apart and examining every part of the mechanism and electronics trying to work out what was wrong. I ended up going through two new nozzles, I replaced both my belt attachments, I redid the bed carriage, the thing that actually holds it to the belt so it can move, and I had to resolder a bunch of the electronics just to make sure it was working. But don't worry, I kept it together the entire time. But my fan has broken. It smells like burnt plastic in here. So at this point, I've basically replaced everything on my printer. I've even resorted to super gluing some bolts in, so that's the point I'm at right now. Eventually, with much emotional support from my friends and the internet, I got the printer up and working again. So we can move on to the next category. Now this one, I am really excited about. This feels extra sweet. It's time for a montage. Just another sunny day in Southern California. It's where the people came. One of the things that I wanted a 3D printer for in the first place was cases for electronics. I tend to play around with tiny computers and sometimes getting the right case for a project can be really tricky, but I knew a 3D printer in Thingiverse could sort me out. Let's start with the Raspberry Pi 4. This is actually the Raspberry Pi that should be attached to my printer and running Octopi. But unfortunately, with the new frame upgrade, I have nowhere to mount it. So I took to the interwebs to find a replacement. Turns out there are a lot of different Raspberry Pi cases out there, so I found one that I thought would work. And I also thought, why not print it in this new filament I got? Because who doesn't want to test out a brand new filament in the middle of a series of prints that was already going swimmingly well? Am I right? You're right, it was a bad idea, it was a bad idea. But this one didn't work, um, I couldn't slide it onto my printer, so I had to find a replacement. And I found this one eventually by a user called kwitting95. Now this is just a flat plate that my Raspberry Pi will eventually attach to and then it'll sit on the side of my printer and I can run Octopi off of that. So expect some more time lapses coming soon. Really happy with this one, how it turned out. Finally, we have the um, <coughs> Arduino-ish thing. Okay, it's a cheap ripoff. I'll tell you what, if you leave a like on this video, uh, maybe I'll buy myself a real one. I just got this because I wanted to play around with some Arduino projects. I'm quite comfortable with Raspberry Pi and wanted to have a go at some Arduino-ish stuff. And this one was just a cheap alternative. So I'm really sorry, Arduino. I promise I'll make it up to you. So I printed a case for this one. Again, out of this green plastic, which I finally figured out how to use. Okay, and the Arduino is just gonna sit in there. Um, again, I'll show you what it looks like in the case. That's great. It'll make an amazing prototyping case for me. Thank you very much to Esquillo, who is the user who posted this Arduino case. Um, I'm really looking forward to using it. Right, on to the next print. You know what it is by now. Homemade gifts always hit different, and the 3D printer opens up a world of possibilities for gift giving. Let's start with something simple. I love superheroes and comic books, and I know a lot of my friends do too. So I was searching through Thingiverse and I found these awesome superhero keychains made by Formbite. I assume I had to shout that. So yeah, they're just these simple superhero keychains that I printed in that lovely green material that I now am a master of. And I figure I can give these to my friends, each one of them that uh, likes the superheroes. And I didn't print the keychains before you get too impressed, but they were needed to complete the gift. So thank you to uh, Formbite for creating these. My friends will love them. If you're after something a bit more personalized, then you could create a keychain with somebody's name in it. 
I made this one using a tool called Tinkercad. Uh, this is actually one of their tutorials, so super easy to make. You can just open up, copy this uh, key ring, and then put your own name in there. I decided to make one for Abby. So we've got this nice Abigail keychain here, which I just think is lovely. Uh, again, I didn't print the key key ring, but it is kind of needed to complete the whole thing. Another thing me and my friends really like to do is play Dungeons and Dragons. So I wondered if there was anything I could print to give to my party. Of course, Thingiverse did not disappoint. I found these low poly minifigs made by Division 3D and they're just perfect. So I printed an elven archer, a dwarf axe man, and this nighty thing in all of my different filaments to give to my party. There are loads of different flavours, so if you're into D&D, it's definitely something I'd recommend you look at. One last category to go. I'm really looking forward to this one, so I'll see you on the other side. But first, you know what's coming now. Montage time. Christmas has come and gone, and I was doing most of these prints during the holiday season, so I wanted to see what sort of Christmas slash holiday joy I could bring with my 3D printer. Turns out there are loads of different Christmas decorations or accessories that I could print, so I wanted to pick a few of my favourites. First, I want to show you the reindeer. So, this is a kit card. Basically, it's a bunch of pieces that you cut out and then stick together. You might recognise them from your Warhammer or Airfix phases. I brought a couple of these with me on Christmas Day for the family to make and they went down really well. So thank you to Tone001 for giving me and my family a bunch of Christmas fun. I also spotted these amazing cookie cutters and I just thought they were so adorable that I had to print them. Unfortunately, because of all the issues, these weren't finished before Christmas, but I think I might even use them before next Christmas because they're just so cute and there are loads of them. And we all have Ugumi to thank for these absolutely adorable, this one looks a bit menacing if I'm honest, but still cute cookie cutters. Finally, I wanted to make something for the tree. There are a load of different decorations and I found what I thought was going to be a print in place spinning star. So I put it on my printer, but at the time, as I said, it was having all these kind of random issues and the problem with this one is that it doesn't spin. Right, it should kind of articulate. The issue was that really I had the settings on 100% infill, which you shouldn't have, uh, and so the gaps were filled in, um, so that's my fault. Uh, word of warning, always check the preview when you're 3D printing and you can avoid being like me. The tree decoration was made by Muzz64 and I'm sorry to them for letting you down, I'll definitely make sure I get a better version of this up on my tree for next year. Still I think it's quite beautiful and you can hang it using this hole, so not a complete failure. That's it. I had 14 individual types of prints in that and I ended up printing 20 successful ones and that is not even counting the uh, numerous failures I had on the way. It wasn't all bad and I know that I've seemed frustrated through this video but I got the 3D printer and I wanted one because I wanted a project, right? So having to fix it in the middle of it is something that I'm kind of used to. But if you really do want to take away, if you're getting a 3D printer, I would definitely recommend not getting the original Aonet A8. It is very fiddly and there are similarly, you know, a little bit more expensive printers like the Ender 3 that I know for a fact will just work out the box and have an equally large community. As I said earlier, this is going to be my last 3D printing focused video for a little while. This channel is all about different hobbies, so it is time that we moved on. The next time you see me, things are going to get a whole lot more roleplay-y. That's right. I'm introducing you to the world's most popular role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons. So you make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and leave a comment as well to be included in next video's subscriber shout out. I appreciate the hell out of you all, thank you for sticking with me. Until next time, my beautiful parade of internet elephants, go learn something.